From your perspective, Lobar, I know we as defenders, we look at quarterbacks differently. Um, and, you know, we hear at the top end of this draft, there are going to be, you know, a number of quarterbacks taken, right? You, you mm -hmm. see it in the top five, top 10. Do you have any um, insight from watching it from your perspective that might be a different take on some of these top quarterbacks? Man, that's a... I know. Because <laughs> I've been going, I've been ringing the bell on Justin Fields for a minute. I just don't understand why Justin Fields continues to be... I, I do understand why, and I'm going to tell you why. Because he's a triple threat quarterback. And we still have yet to see a true triple threat quarterback win the Super Bowl. And everybody's like, oh, if they see it, they're going to be like, no, Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes ain't no triple threat quarterback. Like, yes, he can run, and he runs efficiently. He's like the equivalent of John Elway as a, yeah. as a threat, right? Like, John Elway could run, and he could run well, but John Elway would never compare to a Mike Vick or, uh, you know, a Lamar Jackson, like, and neither would Pat Mahomes, not not in the running category. So when I look at a guy like Justin Fields just ran a 4-4, four, four, what, a 4-4-3, four, four, I believe, like smoking. Fast. He's fast. The dude is fast. And and so and 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 he shows that running ability. Uh he showed it a lot uh while he was at Ohio State. And I just think that people have trepidation towards quarterbacks that have the ability to run because I think they don't trust the fact that they will always trust their ability to throw the ball as a throwing quarterback. And that, that is hurting his, his, you know, in a way his, his draft status, I guess. Um, when I look at these other guys, uh, you know, I think the guy out of North Dakota, South, South Dakota, one of the Dakotas, what, Trey Lance, name? Trey Lance. Yeah. Um, I think he's, he's a, a heck of a player. Got great, great arm talent. Mm -hmm. um, but what do we really know about him? Like, <laughs> I, you know, we're high on him, but it's like, all right, you had a great pro day, you know, wonderful. Like I don't get blown away by pro days other than your physical attributes. I want to know your 40, I want to know your vert. Like, I want to know stuff like that. You do some crazy stuff like that. That's what I'm paying attention to. Your film is your film. You're not going to convince me throwing the ball on air that you're the dopest dude. Like, I don't buy it, you know. So, um, God bless him. Good luck to him. But I don't buy that. I'm not putting him ahead of, of uh, Justin Fields. And then you got, uh, what, we got BYU. What's his name? Zach Wilson. Z what is it? Zach oh, Wilson. Yeah, there we go. Zach Wilson. Like, what do we know about Zach Wilson? Same exact thing, I would say. Better talent, you know, better talent that they're playing against. Um, BYU, that is. And I look at Zach Wilson and it's like, you know, you're still investing in, in the unknown. And that's how you have to look at it is, is that he's going to be an unknown. Now, the, the interesting one is what's Mac? What is it? Mac, 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 Mac Jones, Mac Jones. All right. He's an interesting one because I think he's, he's what traditional football represents. He's right. like what it should be. He came in, he paid his dues. He, he was on, on the, the team with, with, uh, <laughs> with two national championship quarterbacks in, in Hertz and in Tua and finally got his opportunity and he did the same exact thing. He made it count. So to me, I would say he's the best prepared out of all of them, even maybe even Trevor Lawrence, because Trevor Lawrence has never known what it has felt like to be in that position. And, mm -hmm. and he's had so much success from day one that you look at Trevor Lawrence and when we saw him get into a little bit of adversity, it didn't end well. You know, if you think back to that Ohio state game, he was faced with adversity and, and he, he didn't pull them through. In fact, it got uglier by the quarter. 
So anyway, but we don't say that. We won't. We will only look for that because <laughs> hey. you know you're not supposed to go after Trevor Lawrence. It's, it's you're supposed to keep it keep it you know on on what what really matters, which is um, everybody else in the draft. So, but you know, I think it. I think I think this is going to turn into a quarterback draft. I would be surprised if we don't see three or four quarterbacks come off of the off of the board immediately it's just a matter of where they go and go and I feel like the Jets at two it's like yeah you know you got Salah that's there now so you would assume that they're going to try to adopt the same type of offensive of philosophy that the number three pick in the 49ers are going to have so that would be interesting to see if they take Justin Fields or Trey Lance because of those those attributes that that they're looking for in that style of RPO stretch zone type of offense that they run, um, and then at number three, like who? So if one goes and the other doesn't, it is 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 the Alabama kid going to be one of the guys in the mix? Does that fall off? And then once you get out of those first three picks, where are we going? You know, where are we going? And and so to me. I, I think that the quarterback conversation is one that has been, it's turned into intense entertainment in a lot of ways. And it'll be interesting to see how it plays out because these quarterbacks have been built up to be highly touted, but I only see maybe one or two that really come out of the wash and turn into like really, really dope NFL quarterbacks. Yeah, I think you brought up a great point of Trevor Lawrence that we don't hear a lot. I mean, the the championship was bad. It was bad. It, it was bad. And yeah, it was bad. And and it wasn't that everyone around him was bad and he was good. He was not good. Yeah, the playoffs. Yeah. The playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ohio State, not only did Ohio State dominate him, but Justin Fields dominated Clemson. Yep. Yep. And last I checked, I know Trevor and Justin are, aren't lining up against one another head to head. But in order to say you're the best, they say the saying goes, you got to beat the best. Yeah. And he outperformed, in my opinion, he outclassed and outperformed Trevor Lawrence in a game where they went head to head as quarterbacks. So let the film tell it. You could also say the same thing about Mac Jones versus Justin Fields though. Well, that's fair, but that's Alabama. There's always <laughs> okay. a qualifier when it's Alabama. And that's the thing about it. Now I would ask you and, and, and that comparison, because it was certainly the, the dominance and the size and the strength that you saw from Alabama's fronts the defense and the offensive mm -hmm. front I would ask you how many quarterbacks have you seen really play well from Alabama from Alabama yeah, not many I'm gonna wait on you yeah not many I, I don't think they have a very good track record name, at name Alabama me, a, name me a recent pro bowler from from a, a recent possible MVP what about, candidate in the okay. NFL from Alabama I can flip it on you though. What about Ohio State? Fair enough. And I think that that's the and I think that that's think, the what's playing against Justin Fields. Yeah, is, is I Haskins, think for both Terrell of them, Pryor, to be honest. you know, yeah. Troy, like, yeah. So I think it's against both of them. Yeah, I think that's the thing with the draft. I don't know if you agree with me, but you got to evaluate the individual prospect as opposed to the the helmet. It, I I agree. But, you know, we don't always do that. Yeah, we don't. No, we and don't. I think you made some great points there. Those those were two shape points like very good, sir. You, you got a future <laughs> in this business. 